Hey, this is John Smith with Extra Hop Networks. Today I want to talk um, about how to integrate threat intelligence into your wire data analytics solution from Extra Hop Networks. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to take a blacklist that we've downloaded from a threat analytics provider. In this case, we're using Alien Vault. And we're going to gra grab some snort rules, a collection of snort rules, and we're going to copy them to a Unix peer that I've got. So I've got this uh, Ubuntu box that's running a SIF server for me as well. And it's sort of use it as my bro slash SIF slash threat uh, intelligence server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the snort rules for malicious hosts, spamming hosts, that type of stuff. I'm going to grab that list. I'm going to download it as a text file to my Ubuntu server. And then I'm going to use Python to push it into what we call the session table. So what the session table is in ExtraHop is it is memcache that can take up to 32,768 records. The blacklist that Alien Vault has provided me is about 16,000 records, give or take. So I'm going to import this blacklist into my session table. And what that does is allows me to have an instant lookup. So when I see a client make a session to the outside, I can basically evaluate that and say, hey, is this session that they're about to have with a known bad actor? So I've got this list of bad actors, and if I see any sort of digital transfer, any sort of digital information traversing my gateway that is talking to one of these malicious hosts that has been defined by Alien Vault, then I'll get an alert. I, I'll, I have a, actually a dashboard here, so I have a dashboard to alert me if someone has a blacklist violation. Um, this is a DNS exfiltration alert. It's not related to this video. I'll talk about that later. But basically, this positions us to, in real time, without parsing through terabytes or even petabytes of logs, this allows us to provide surveillance in real time of those sessions that might be connecting with a known bad actor. And it also allows you to leverage, to a, for, to a, in a real time fashion, your threat intelligence. So that first step is to download the malware blacklist, which I've used a curl, man, curl command to download it. And now I'm going to push it into my session table. So I've got a couple of um, connections to my um, Ubuntu server. And real quickly, I just want to show you that list. So here you see the list of all of the different, all of the different hosts that are in that blacklist that Alien Vault has. So what I've got is a Python script. Um, let me clear. Let me show you that cat. Um, and basically, you're going to load two modules. One's netaddr and one's memcache. With Ubuntu, I couldn't use pip. I had to actually go to use apt-get for that. But once you load these modules in, you'll be in a position to then co connect to the memcache. And then you need the netaddr so that you can write the IP addresses. So if we look at that blacklist again, it's IP addresses, and then it's a little bit of intelligence around what what exactly it is. So to import it, we would just run Python And this is about 16,000 records that's being written into my memcache on the extra hop server. So I'm going to, it's going to take a little bit. And real quick, let's look at that again. Um, I believe it was a cat. I have it in DOS key. So here's a list of hosts. And um, as you can see, I've been testing this. So I'm just going to look up. If you see that second one there, it's a scanning host, 113.175.206.177. So I'm going to see if I can get that. And I do. There you see it's a, it's a scanning host. So there's the information there. Now, for the demo, I don't want to connect to one of these malicious hosts. So I'm going to enter in um, real quick just using a manual command. I'm going to end the IP, enter in the IP address of wiredata.net. So real quickly, let me look it up. 
Um, and WireData.net is my blog um, that I get about three views a day. So if you uh, want to learn more about how to use ExtraHop with security, uh, read WireData.net. Um, but anyway, I'm going to add my my blog into this um, known blacklist, or I'm going to append it to the memcache so that it's in there with with the rest of the blacklisted servers. Please keep in mind um, my blog, short of maybe some immature remarks and uh, tasteless content, generally should not be on any blacklists. So I'm going to enter this in, and I'm just going to call it wireddata.net. So I'm just manually entering this. You will never have to do this. I just don't want to browse one of those malicious sites. So I'm going to add this. And then I'm going to just look it up real quick. So mc.get 184.168.18.1. And I see wiredata.net. And now I'm going to actually browse wire data from this Ubuntu box, which is part of my span, and I should see this pretty quickly. So I'm going to access what we now have as a malicious site. Um, and let me just see how long this takes. So I'm going to start my stopwatch. And I'll come to here to my shell again. And I'm just going to curl. I'm just going to browse it real quick. And that, so now that I've actually went to a website that should be in my blacklist, I actually have a trigger that is looking for this, right? So let's see if my trigger actually executed it. So I'll come here. And here's my blacklist check. And when I look here, I actually do see session with a known bad actor. This is kind of my debug window uh, where I kind of look for any, where I kind of look to see if my trigger is actually, if I've actually had a connection to a malicious host. So this all looks good. Um, we'll check my dashboard here. And there you see we actually have a blacklist violation. Uh, here we see the client that made the connection, the server that was malicious. And you see here this blacklist check, we got an alert there. This will also email your incident response team basically letting you know, you know, the client and the server that were involved in, in this actual incident, right? So this kind of gives you a quick look, kind of gives you a quick idea, post haste, somebody connected to a known bad actor. And then likewise, I've got a couple of other things that I do here. Um, the next thing I do is I also, if we go back, let's look at that trigger. Um, and so that was about, you know, that was an alert in about a minute and 40 seconds. Now I did some reading and according to, I believe, uh, Security Magazine, um, SC Magazine, breach detection, quote unquote, improved to 146 days. This positions you to see at least that you've made a connection to a bad actor in less than a minute and a half. I mean, I've, I've been babbling long enough that at least 10 seconds of, of this time has been taken up with me running my mouth. So that's pretty good. That's something that I don't think exists today. And that's kind of the power of leveraging wire data with your with your threat intelligence solution. Again, we have an open platform at ExtraHop and we're positioned to uniquely help you leverage some of your threat intelligence. But if we look at this trigger, if you notice I'm doing a couple things here. I'm also writing it out to a, uh, to a elastic search appliance so that I can go in there and it, that's kind of good when you want to look at Gosh, when you want to look at, um, you know, potential patterns, right? So we do have an elastic search engine similar to a Splunk, and we do write it there, although all of those alerts were triggered without logs. They were taken directly off the wire. But also, I'm doing a precision packet capture, so you'll actually have a PCAP file of the actual uh, connection to the bad actor. So real quickly, let's go see if we have a PCAP file. And that's in my admin menu. And if we look here, we see we actually have blacklist match. And we can download this and actually open it up in Wireshark and see what happened. So we have digital evidence. We've alerted your incident response team as well. So there we can open it up in Wireshark. And there you see my, 
my Ubuntu box connecting to wiredata.net. Again, that's just for an example. And then um, we also write the data to our search appliance so that you can go into the search appliance and see if you've had any hits from malicious sites and then check any patterns. What are the most malicious sites that are hit? What are the most common ones? If you're in a large organization, it can be kind of challenging to match all these up. So if you look here, you see we have a malicious host access and then we also have visibility into, you know, which hosts um, were accessed, which clients were accessing them. So if you have something phoning home to a command and control site, something like that, you can get a blacklist of command and control sites and immediately get a layout of what systems are infected with that malware and are phoning home or what, what systems are a part of. If there's a botnet command and control site, you can see what systems are have been recruited into that botnet. Again, this took less than a minute and a half. Um, again, I was babbling for at least 10 seconds, maybe more. And we've immediately alerted you with our Elasticsearch appliance. We've given you a PCAP that you can look at for digital evidence if you need to prosecute, if you need to terminate them. And in addition to that, we have a dashboard that includes the number of alerts, the client and server, and all of this happened in real time. And that's the kind of agility we need to fight tomorrow's threats. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for watching and have a great day.